Good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful week this week, getting to spend time with your family. I know for me personally, it's been really enjoyable. I had a birthday on Monday, and uh, my mom and my dad and my older brother were able to come over, and we played ping pong all night. My mom made this great meal. And it was just good to be together. It was good to be together and to talk about, you know, different things uh, that are going on in our family right now. Just being able to be open and honest and transparent with one another. And I just want to encourage you at home. Would you guys take the time to have conversations? Would you continue? You know, I, I've, been, I've been so blessed by being able to get on Facebook and see the different pictures of, you know, families being together and allowing each other to just grow and flourish in this time where, you know, we, we're having a lot of uncertainties in life, we're not being able to, you know, go about our day-to-day -day activities as we have for you know, the rest of our lives. I mean, this is completely new to us. And I know that we've talked about that and that's continued to be brought up in recent weeks that, you know, we are living a different life right now than we have ever before. But even in that, man, what greater time do we have right now than to get our families together and to talk about the different questions that we might have surrounding faith and the different questions that we have surrounding life, um, Going forward, you know, what career field we want to talk about going into with our parents. You know, if we want to go to college, you, I mean, that's a great question for you students to be talking about right now with your parents. Mom and dad, you know, is college an, is a, a good option for me? I know looking at my life, um, going to college was something that uh, nobody else in my family had done up to that point. My older brother, uh, who graduated a year before I did, was the first uh, first member in our family to go to college. And I wanted to be like Travis, and so I followed in his footsteps, and I decided to go to college as well. And while college was so fun for me, and I was able to learn so much, it's one of the things that I wish I had taken more time to consider, is this something that I actually need? Is going to a four-year school, a private school for four or five years, something that I really need to do? Because I'm telling you guys now on the back end, you know, having this debt loan is something that is, you know, concerning for me, but it's something that requires me to have great faith, even in times Right now, I believe that God is using my past circumstances to grow me in faith, right? Because even when it, when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of life, what we need to do is walk by faith. And we talked about that last week. We talked about, you know, why it's so important to walk by faith and that we need to keep our focus on God and His will for our life. You know, when we talked about Peter as he got out of the boat, uh, what would have happened if all the disciples would have been around him and surrounding one another, grouped together, going forward to see a miracle happen? And I believe that had the disciples been with Peter when, they got, when he got out of the boat and walked on water and had Peter not faltered and looked around at the, the fears that were around him, the big waves that were crashing around, if he would have had faith just to say, God, you allowed me to get out of the boat and to walk on water, so I am going to trust you to lead me all the way to you. We don't need to be separated. I want to be right next to you. I'm going to walk on water until I'm in your very presence, standing side by side with the true King and the Savior of our world, Jesus Christ. We talked about how even when it seems foolish to be obedient to the will of God, that's when the greatest steps of faith that mold the rest of our lives happen. When Noah was in a time of drought, but together with his family's help, they built an ark and two by two the animals came so that life would continue beyond such a horrible generation of people. And that was only four generations into life on earth as far as humans were considered and already they were you know murderers and it was it was it was such a bad time to be a human in that fourth generation but 
when Noah and his family were building the ark, again, in a season of drought, and then the flood waters came and they, 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 they erased everything except for that beacon of light and hope that was the ark. So even when it seems foolish for us to walk out God's plans for each and every one of us, I want to just encourage you guys, take those steps of faith. Keep your focus, keep your attention on the Lord and what he has promised you. Be in scripture, be in prayer. Worship regularly so that the Holy Spirit moments, those Holy Spirit encountering moments would overtake you so that you would be assured in what God is doing in your life. We talked about how it's a daily surrender, about how every day when it comes to us and God's will, we need to set aside our old selfish ways so that his will for our life can come into fruition, can come into being, and we would see a work of God. Testimony after testimony in Hebrews chapter 11 is really where we see the Old Testament heroes that walked by faith. And you know what's so interesting to me when we talk about Hebrews chapter 11, every one of those um, heroes had a moment of doubt. Every one of those heroes had an opportunity to turn back. But what makes them a hero of the faith is that they pressed on. And they fought the good fight as Paul writes in the book of Philippians. They went forward knowing that God was in control. And as we talked about Moses and Joshua last year, how, you know, the Moses, when he was leading the Israelites, he always struggled with this self-doubt of not being good enough of not being able to speak clear enough to make other people understand what God was trying to do. So he asked God right away, you know, use somebody else. And so when it came time after these Israelites have fleed Egypt and after they've been in the desert and they come to this promised land, this land that is made for them, this good and fertile land. They say in the scripture that it's the land of milk and honey. So it's a sweet land. It's a sustaining land. It's a fulfilling land. And it's just for the Israelites. But when they come, Moses brought in other people and their opinions. And he didn't just firmly say, no, this is the will of God, that this is ours, so we're going to take it. Instead, he listened to other people's advice. And because of that decision, because of his doubt, those Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years. And in that 40 years, what's so good about God is that every single day he was providing for the needs of the Israelites. Every single morning, the Israelites would have fresh manna that was dropped and they would go and they would pick it up and that's what they would eat. Every single day, every single day they would have the same thing, but it was by faith that they, it would be provided every single day for them, right? Because if they, if they tried to take too much, more than just that day's serving, then it would become rotten and they wouldn't be able to use it the next day. And so every day it was by faith. There's going to be fresh manna tomorrow. And I believe that's why Joshua and his story, when he gets control of the Israelites and and of the army, he's not waiting. He is pressing forward. He's walking by faith. And as we get into Joshua chapter 10, there is something that's so cool about his story of faith that I want to share with you guys. And if you don't know what chapter that is referring to Joshua chapter 10 is actually the when Joshua prays that the sun would stand still. I don't want to get into scripture quite yet. I just want to continue talking about, you know, how faith and grace are tied together. And this week's message I have titled, uh, Faith, the Essence of Life. And for you guys that are watching, I just want you guys to know that faith and grace, I genuinely believe genuinely believe are tied together. We need both. We can't just have faith and we can't just have grace. They work together. As we continue to define faith in our lives, it's important to remember that having, um, 
having a saving faith, and again, I want to clarify that having a saving faith means that we surrender complete control to Jesus as our Savior, and that we desire to follow His will and His purposes for us throughout a committed life. A saving faith means that we're committed throughout life. Faith firmly states that Christ died for us so that we would once again be able to encounter God in a personal relationship. God the Father wants to have a personal relationship with me, with you, but it's up to us because of the free will that he gave each and every one of us to choose him. We need to completely devote ourselves to living a life that is represented by our faith so that we can live like Jesus. Do you believe that you could walk this earth as Jesus did? See, one of the things about faith is that I believe that we could because the Holy Spirit, that when we encounter those Holy Spirit moments, it's not just about a moment, it's about a life, but by His power, the Holy Spirit's power in our lives, we can walk forward as Jesus did. We can heal the sick. We can proclaim the name that is above all names. We can go forward making the majors the majors and the minors the minors. Again, Christ is Lord. Our faith and our life, they are examples of that belief that Christ is Lord and Savior, that he came and died for each and every one of us so that we can be reunited with our Savior, with our Father, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we would be able to encourage encounter others and lead them in faith as well. Faith means that we are humble enough to admit when we have done something wrong, when we are wrong, when we've made a bad judgment call, and that we want to repent. Guys, repentance is so important in faith because again, it's believing that once I have confessed my sin to God and if need be to other people, God is going to take that sin And he's going to wash it away. And he's going to make us new once more. And again, just like last week when we talked about how as we continue to choose faith over fear, we're going to walk in victory. We're going to walk in victory, not because these fears don't ever come up again, but because as we choose faith time and time again, there's going to be a testimony that's born. No, I didn't have to be in fear of what was going to happen because I chose faith. I chose faith over my fears and those testimonies allow me to continue to do so in my life. Faith translates into trust and obedience. You see, we want God's presence operating in our life, but we need to trust and obey those Holy Spirit moments, those Holy Spirit encounters. When we have a nudging of the Lord, say, I want you to do this. I want you to go and pray for somebody today before school starts. I want you to sit with the person at lunch that doesn't have many friends around them. I want you to be respectful to your teacher when your classmates are not. I want you to lead by example because you're choosing the will of God in your life over something else. Because we trust that God loves us and only has plans to prosper us and further his kingdom cause, then we sacrifice everything to make sure that we are serving God to the fullest of our potential sacrifice. When Jesus came to earth, it was a sacrifice to leave the full presence of God in heaven so that we could experience the fullness of God was a sacrifice. Teaching every single day for three years straight in his professional ministry, making sure that he was professing the name of the Father. Jesus was pointing everyone to following God, to reuniting their life with him, to making sure that their priority was in following a good and just God. We need to make sure that we too are trusting and obeying God as he's calling us into action. 
Faith causes us to have a personal, passionate, devout relationship, which causes us to trust more, to obey more, to be more grateful, and to grow in loyalty to the one who saved us and allows us to experience life to the fullest, Jesus Christ. You see, guys, again, faith is so important that, again, I believe faith is the essence of life. That as you go forward, right, with faith, your life is going to be made more full, more joyful, more fun, more adventure, less doubt, less fear, less anxiety, less depression. And isn't that what we all are striving for, that we would be able to experience life to the fullest and have a great adventure, that we would be allowed to experience joy day in and day out, that we would not feel like we're drowning in a sea of fear, anxiety, depression, but that we would walk on water by faith, experiencing all that God has to offer each and every one of us. Faith is so important that it goes beyond a single moment, a single encounter, so that we may trust in the process of growth to see the fullness of God brought to light in our lives. But part of faith is that we are not always faithful because of the selfishness that wells up, the old man or woman that wells up in us and overpours, which is the sin that we create in our own life. But this is where we must rely on the grace of God. The grace of God is his mercy that's freely given to you and me. Each and every one of us can experience his mercy that has been freely given. Not because we deserve to be shown grace or mercy, but because God our Father in heaven wants a personal relationship with you that he, and he wants that relationship so much that he's willing to forgive us of our trans, transgressions, of our lacks of faith, of the sin that has welled up and overpoured in our life. God's grace is offering us his favor. God's grace is offering us the benefits that come from being a chosen heir to the kingdom. The benefits that come from being a chosen son and daughter that has been adopted by him. The benefit of being born into the kingdom because our faith is what our life professes. The spirit is what allows us to experience the grace of God so that we can do his will. So that we can operate by his good works and that we can perform or that we can rather carry out his actions that he's already set forward for us. See, and that's what's so cool about God is that by faith, I believe that all we need to do is walk forward and make choices that are going to honor God because he's already given us the victory. He's already broken the chains of bondage. He's already done the heavy lifting. He just wants you to walk forward. And if he says, throw your net on the other side of the boat, we don't question it because we've been out fishing all night. We simply obey and see the abundance of his blessing. And that is his grace for each and every one of us, that he wants to bless us abundantly, but it's our choice to freely walk forward and accept his gifts, and his will in our life. Again, it's the spirit that allows us to experience the fullness of grace of God so that we can do his will by working with thanksgiving on our lips, joy in our heart, and we will, f- and we will carry out his plans for us. God's grace needs to be pursued God's grace needs to be desired. God's grace needs to be accepted because again, it is something that is offered to us. But it's our choice to accept grace in our lives. And it's his grace that we need to seek first and foremost because it's him that we are living for. It's him that we are pursuing. It's him that has already given us these victories, this good, good grace. 
Essentially, it's God's grace that allows us to pursue those who are still unbelievers so that they too can experience the fullness of God by living a life as a Christian who is sold out for faith every single day. This is when I want to get into Joshua chapter 10. And there's a lot of, there's a lot in this chapter. And I don't want to just read the whole thing. I want to encourage you guys, be in scripture, read your Bibles. And perhaps today as a family, if you can do a devotional, read Joshua chapter 10 together. What verses stand out to you guys? What questions do you have about what you've just read? But I just want to give you guys an overview. And essentially what has happened is that after Jericho, Joshua and the Israelites, they're marching forward and they're conquering city after city after city. They're not doubting God anymore. They're not thinking that it's foolish what he's asking them to do. They're simply going forward. But there comes a moment when five different like big city kings come together and form one army because the, uh, I believe it is, and the men, and this is, uh, this is verse six, chapter 10, Joshua chapter 10, verse six. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal saying, do not relax your hand from your servants because the men of Gibeon had made peace with the Israelites. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the hill country are gathered against us. Verse 7. So Joshua went up to Gilgal and he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua in verse 8. Do not fear them for I have given them into your hands. Not a man Not a single man of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly. He came upon the army of the Amorites suddenly because he marched all through the night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them, the Israelites, into a panic. I'm sorry, the Lord threw the Amorites into a panic before the Israelites who struck them with a great blow at Gibeon and chased them by the way of the ascent of Betharon and struck them as far as Azekah and Makedah. I'm pretty sure I just butchered those names, so forgive me, but (laughs) moving on. And as they fled before Israel, while they were going down the ascent of Beth Horan, the Lord threw down large stones from heaven on them as far as Azekah. And they died. There were more who died because of the hailstones, those large stones that God was throwing from heavens, than the sons of Israel killed with a sword. And at that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, son, this is Joshua saying, son, stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still and the moon stopped and the nation took vengeance on their enemies. God is fighting for you. God is on your side. God has already declared you the victor of your life. But by faith, we need to walk forward. And grace is what is offered to us when we fail to accept the call. Grace is again something that is freely given to us so that we would not be discouraged but we would be encouraged to advance once more. In life, can you guys imagine what faith it would have taken to tell the son, or rather to ask God to tell the son to stop moving? It says in scripture that there has never been a day like it since. 
But God saw fit to grant Joshua the audacity to pray a sun stand still prayer. In our own life, where do we need to pray these sun stand still prayers? Where do we need to see a battle won that has maybe seemed unwinnable so far? You know, so many young men nowadays struggle with watching pornography. And maybe that battle is something that we can all fight together. God, would you not allow our young men to be discouraged, you know, to the point where they need to watch pornography to be fulfilled, but would you allow them to step up and be the courageous men of God that you have called them to be, to be men of valor, to be men of humility, to be men who are seeking your will for their life. And for our young girls that struggle so much with identity, with feeling like they're enough, like they can fulfill the needs of others. And I just want to say to you girls, man, you are more than enough. You are more than you already know. You don't need to degrade yourself or to lower your standards. You need to continue, you know, to just press on fighting the good fight, as does everyone. Again, these are two areas where we could pray for sun stand still prayers over the lives of our young men and our young ladies. And we can just say, God, your will be done. Because we're tired of seeing young men and young women fall to the sin of this world. To fall to not feeling enough. To fall to a place where we're degrading ourselves and we're not seeking the fullness that you have for us. By faith, I want to encourage each of you to live your life the way that Joshua did. To live in victory. Knowing that you have the Lord fighting on your side. And by prayers of an audacious faith. Of a faith that you have made your own. Because of the victories. Because of the testimonies that you have seen God work in your life. I believe that he's going to continue to do so. There's nothing that can stand against you. Because again, you're already the victor by the will of God and the battles that he has already won for you. But you walk forward in faith. You claim victory in Jesus' name. The Lord is fighting on your side. And there's nothing that can stand against you when the Lord of everything, the King of earth and heaven, the creator of land, sky, water, and atmosphere is fighting for you. No weapon will prosper, no curse, no enemy, no anxiety, no depression is ever going to ever overcome you because God of heaven and earth is on your side and he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He holds the world in his hand. He has plans to prosper you and he is never going to let you go through anything that you can't handle. Your faith may be tested. You may grow stronger because in life we want to continue not just to consume milk but to grow and to consume food that is solid. We want to consume solid food, meat and potatoes of faith because he allows us to become prepared For the next battle. In my own life. There's many times. That I can look to and say God. I know that you are on my side. That you were helping me fight that battle. But in all honesty. When I come back to thinking about God. Where were the victories that you helped me the most? It was in the confidence. Right before I would head into battle. And I know I say that with, you know, a a degree of, you know, like, I I can't think of the word. But I I say that with, it you know, like, oh, look at me. But in reality, it's don't look at me. Look at how God has used me as I went into battle. And I'm talking specifically about the different competitions that I would be in. You know, whether that was uh, a theater performance, whether that was a band concert, whether it was a sporting event. 
I know that God allowed me to have peace and confidence. And by, uh, and by continuing, I mean, every time that I would, before I would step on the mat or step on the, the gridiron or step into the concert hall or step into the uh, performing arts center, it was always, God, be with me during this time so that this may point to you and seeds may be planted. And God was faithful. And God will always be faithful, even when we're not. And we need his grace in our life. For each and every one of you guys, I hope that you're using this time to have good conversations with your family members. That you're surrounding each other with the time of faith and love and joy, but also authenticity. That you guys are being real and transparent with one another. Because there's no greater time to ask your parents hard questions than right now when you're around them so much. When you can grow in relationship. Don't take this time for granted. Don't lock yourselves in a room to play video games. But get outside with your brothers and sisters or your, you know, your mom and your dad. Throw the football around. Practice your instrument. You know, Ask your mom and dad how to change a tire, how to change oil in the car, how to, you know, get, and we're in a tax season right now. You know, I know that you guys, when we're young, it's like, well, somebody else is taking care of that, but you're going to need to know that real life knowledge eventually. So take the time right now while you have it and seek after growing in these areas, but don't neglect your faith. Don't neglect the time that you have right now with God to go forward and to pray and to worship and to serve him and just to allow the daily scripture readings and devotions to fill you up from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head so that the Holy Spirit would just overflow and that the gifts of the Lord would be evident in your life, that the fruit of the Spirit would be evident in your life. So that you would be prepared for the next battle. Because there is going to be a next battle. And let's choose faith over fear. I want to pray with you guys. I want to bless you guys. And I want to say that God is with you. God is for you. And nothing can stand against you. Would you pray with me? Father God. God you are so good. You are so merciful. Your grace is so evident. God, would you be with our families? Would you allow us to focus on you right now? To keep our eyes on you. To believe in an audacious faith. To believe in an authentic faith. To believe in a real faith. The Savior, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed so much so that we could be united with you once more. I pray, Father God, that we would glorify him. That we would seek to be taught by him. To grow as he did. To live our lives as he did. Jesus is the great example for each and every one of us. And he sent the spirit so that we would live like he did. Experiencing the fullness of your majesty on earth. Father God, bless these families. Allow them to have time to talk and to be together. As is your will. On earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I love you guys so much. I'm so looking forward to the time when we can be back together. But for right now, stay strong in faith and go forward knowing that you are blessed and the Lord your God loves you unconditionally. See you guys next week.